All right, so in this one, I'm gonna build over the video I've made about VLOOKUP returning multiple columns. So if you want to understand the part where we return multiple columns from VLOOKUP, you should probably watch that video first. Basically what we got here, we have this table with stock numbers and on this other worksheet, we have stock numbers with some other columns. We want to use stock numbers in our advantage to pull some data from this worksheet, right? So we go to merge data and do something like VLOOKUP. And here I can choose this column because we're gonna use an array here, comma, and then the table is my next argument. So I go and select my table starting with the stock number column. I'll drop the last row reference to send this all the way down, F4 to lock this thing, comma, and then columns I want returned as an array. So if I want to get type, cost and profit, that would be two, four and five. So two, four, five. And then finally, after this, we have the type of VLOOKUP. So that's an exact match. And then I'm going to do command shift enter to wrap this in array formula and hit enter. And that should return three columns from the other data set. So this is fine. The issue you might have with this hard coded column numbers is that if somebody decides to go here and add or delete a column out of here, so let's say we decide to add a column here. Let's go check what happened. So right now, see, this doesn't work anymore because what's happening, we're still referring to column two, four, and five, but now column two is this, four is this, and five is this. Basically one shifted the other way. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that column to get back to normal. Now we have this back. Now to avoid this, we may want to go with column names instead of going with column numbers. And the way we can do something like that, first I'm gonna just type what columns I want returned. So I want type, I'm gonna paste that here, go back, I also want cost and profit. So these are my columns. Now I need to get this column headers to return this two, four, five column indexes. So the way I can do something like this, I can use match function. So let's just do this on the side here so that you can see how this is gonna work. So I'm gonna do match. So with match function, if I, for example, search for type comma, and then go to this data source and select my headers, and I'm gonna do F4 to lock those comma, and then use zero as an exact match. If I'd enter, that gives me two. And the reason I get two is because we're searching for this column named type, which in here, in this range is the column number two. So if I change that to cost, that should be column number four. So like this, see now it's column number four. So this returns the column number, but we don't need one column. We need all of these column numbers. So what I can do, I can convert this into an array formula by, instead of searching this one, I'm gonna search for this whole range of values. And again, if I had entered, that's not gonna work because now it's supposed to work as an array formula. So I'm gonna do command shift enter to wrap this in array formula bracket, or you can just type the function, it's the same, hit enter, and see what I get returned is two, four, five, which coincidentally is the same column numbers we need here, two, four, five. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go back here and copy this match function, not including array formula because I already have array formula here. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to this VLOOKUP and replace this array with my match function that returns the array as you can see, I got exactly the same results. I'm gonna remove this. But what's gonna happen now if I change this cost, for example, to price? Well, if I type that correctly, which price is one of the columns here, right? It's gonna go find which column number that is, and it's gonna update our array. And if I change this to cost, it's gonna give us the cost, which is the column name from here. So now we're able to use these column names to get the columns we need. Now the advantage of doing this is that now if I go and delete or add a column, like so, 
See, this still works exactly the same way because it's still going by the name of the column and it's gonna find the new column number and replace it. So I'm gonna delete this. Now with my current setup, I have to make sure that these column names are exactly the same as the column names in here in order for this to work. And if my column names are different, like this one is type two or something, see it doesn't work because it's looking for that column with that name and then this fails. You may have a situation when you don't want to use this column names, but you still wanna go by names so you avoid that breakdown of VLOOKUP situation. So this is what we can do. I'm gonna go back to this formula. This is the part of that formula, see this C1 through E1, that refers to this column names on top. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna replace that part. Instead of being a range from my data, I'm gonna convert it to an array again. And as an array, I'm gonna just pass what I'm searching for, which is basically just the name of columns from your data. So now because it's text, it has to go in quotes. So something like this. So now I have this array as the first argument in my match function, which is comma separated list of values in quotes column names from my data set. Hit enter, still getting the same results. Now it's not connected to these, so I can just call this anything I want. And it works. And if I wanted to change this to, let's say, not profit, but price, I would do price. And now I got price as one of the columns. Now this is just a name for the column. We just type here, it's not connected. So I can remove those as well. See, that gives me type, cost, price. If I wanted, for example, to add this inventory column to this, I can go back and just add this to my column list. Like so, just hit enter. I got my new column, just like that. And this way we can add any column we want anytime we want. So I can go back to this and you can add them in any order. So let's say I want profit after this, so Again, just type the name. So now we got the next column. And again, now because of the way I'm doing this, I could go here and add new columns or delete columns if necessary, and it's just gonna be fine. So as long as I have those columns still in my data, the ones that I'm looking for here, it should work just fine. I'm gonna go back and delete these columns. Back to this, so this was our final formula here. So you could use this or you could use the other method. You could also just open this up. So if you want to go for the rest of the column, so it updates automatically as you add new rows, you can open this reference here for VLOOKUP. We can also open this in our match function is gonna be that column range. So basically right now it refers to from here through here. Now, if you wanted this to work, if you just automatically add new columns to this as well, you could just go back and change this reference and remove the end G reference like this. And now it's not gonna make any difference whatsoever because I'm not adding anything. And then if you wanted to deal with this NAs, you can also wrap this inside of an if function and check if this is blank stock number, then don't do anything, otherwise do this formula. And the way you would do that, again, I did show this in more detail in my previous columns videos, so I'm not gonna talk too much about it, but if you want to understand more about this, please watch the other one. So I'm gonna do if, and I'm gonna check if this, without the end reference, equals to blank, then we wanna keep it blank, otherwise we're gonna do our VLOOKUP formula that we've just built and close parentheses in the end. Hit enter and now it should be nice and clean for the rest of this, but if we were to add more stock numbers, it will just automatically pop the rest in. I'm gonna undo that. So now let's take this to the next level by making this a little more complicated. And actually I'm just gonna build it from start. So that was the formula so far that we've done right here in our formula bar. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove all of this and do a little bit of different 
formula. So let's say the situation we're in is that stock numbers are not the first column in our data. So maybe this is the way our data looks. So I'm gonna move this over here. So now because stock numbers are not the first column, remember the way VLOOKUP works, it's only searching the first column. So when I select the table array, I should select starting from here and right, which means I'm not gonna be able to get type, price, or cost. So the way we can get around this is by, again, using arrays. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you how we can create an array to basically just add another stock number column to the beginning of this so that it works as the first column. So the way I would do this, I would do equal sign and start by choosing stock numbers like this, that column. And because this needs to be an array, I'm gonna put this in a curly bracket like this. And then I'm gonna do a comma because I'm adding another column. And again, you might be in a different uh, setting in your spreadsheet. So if it's not the comma as your separator, you may have to use this thing. But comma is the one for me, separator for columns. That's what I'm gonna use. And then just go back and select the whole array like this. Close curly bracket and hit enter. And if you look, it's basically returning this whole table with an extra column of stock numbers in the beginning. So now if we use this for our VLOOKUP, it should work. So for that, I'm gonna delete this, scroll up, go back to merge data and try to do this VLOOKUP all over again. So I'm gonna do VLOOKUP. And again, the column I'm searching is this, which I'm gonna just do all the way down like this, comma. And then I want the table. Now the table is gonna be that created table where stock numbers is the first column. So I'm gonna start my array formula, go to my merge data source and just select this column of stock numbers. Now for this to work, when I update this range, I'm gonna drop the raw reference so it goes all the way down. So that's gonna be the first column in my array, comma, and the second, third, fourth, and the rest of the columns basically is gonna be the rest of this table. So I'm just gonna select the whole table and again, drop the end reference. Close curly bracket for this. So, so far we got our newly created table, comma. Now in this table, there's gonna be a little catch that we have to talk about. So for now, let me just do column index two. So we get the column index and do zero for exact match and hit enter. Now this returns just one because I didn't put this inside of an array formula function. So I'm gonna do that, command shift enter or control shift enter if you're on Windows or Linux. So that should give you this, hit enter. We got all of these returned again. Now, one thing I want you to pay attention to, see I did column number two and what I get is this. And if we go back and look here, this is really in this table, column number one but this is not the table where we're actually searching. Our VLOOKUP is searching in our virtually created table where it has another column in front where there is a stock number here on the left, which means two becomes the type and three will be price, cost will be four and so on. Now again, if you wanted to return multiple here, you could do an array here and do something like two, five and six, something like that. I don't need that comma, hit enter, and that's gonna return those columns. So again, it's always gonna be one off from what we're thinking. Now again, I want to replace this whole thing anyways with my match function to get the results I want by using column names from my data. So I'm gonna go here and just leave this alone for a second and use a match function separately. So I can show you what we're gonna do here. So I'm gonna do match function and in our match function, I'm gonna list as an array the columns I want from the other source. So I'm gonna basically do something like cost. I'll do inventory. For now, I think there was type. Let's also add that one. So those three columns. So this should be all one line. It just doesn't fit for me, comma. And then I have the range. So I'm gonna go back here and select this headers and I'm gonna drop the age, the ending to just go all the way right from that point on, comma and zero 
for exact match, right? So I'm gonna hit enter, and again, it has to be an array formula. So command shift enter to get back to our array formula and hit enter. And I got three, six, and one. And the reason for that is, well, cost is number three. And then we got six for inventory and one for type because we're searching in this range. But remember, this is the range here. But in reality, if we have an additional virtual column in the beginning, all of these should be plus one to what we have. So if it says three, it should really be four. If it's six, it should be seven. So to get to that, I'm gonna go back to this and just add one to this match function results. So if I had enter, I got four, seven, two, which is what I'm gonna need in here because I have this virtual extra column in the beginning of my array. So now again, I'll go back, grab this thing without the array formula, hit escape, go back to this and replace my array, that's 256, paste that match function that also adds one to the results and hit enter. I'm gonna get rid of this and that returns what? It returns cost, inventory, type. Those are the columns I had from here, cost, inventory, and type, excellent. So if I want to add price to this, no problem. All I have to do, just come back and add price as one of the columns in my match function lookup. And here we go, we got the price as well, just like that. And finally, to just deal with this NA is going down, we're gonna do that if wrapper all over again. So I'm gonna do if function and I'm gonna say if this column and I'm gonna drop the end of this, if that column equals to double quotes for blank, comma, then I want to leave this blank, comma. Otherwise, we want to do this VLOOKUP function. So I need an extra parenthesis now here to close all of that, hit enter, and we should get the same results now, only it's not gonna do all of these. And later on, if we decide to add more stock numbers, it should work just fine. Now again, we get this NA four to three because we simply don't have that stock number here in the list, so we get an NA. And this is the way we can build a formula and notice it's just one formula. There are no other formulas on the right or in the bottom. That's just one formula in this one cell that controls this whole thing. And we basically just get everything using column names and now we also don't care if the first column is not our lookup column. And that should pretty much cover everything I wanted to cover in this video. This is our final formula. Thanks for watching, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.